Okay, welcome. It is once again Machine Controls 1, ELTE 131, Module D. We were talking about ladder diagrams in this module, um, specifically how to label ladder diagrams, how to connect uh, ladder diagrams, uh, and how uh, we're going to use symbols in ladder diagrams. So, what you've done is you've downloaded uh, the PowerPoint and you're going through the PowerPoint and you would have clicked uh, the, the here and that's what you're doing so that you can watch this PowerPoint. Um, there's quite a few other videos in here where you're going to have to stop this video and go back to the PowerPoint and follow another link and as you go you'll fill out the lecture uh, worksheet and complete the interact interactive activities. And, in order to do that, you're going to need uh, to get a couple of items, a control relay, contactor, a couple of push buttons, light selector switch, a digital multimeter, and 13 different leads. So you'll collect your equipment as you, and then work your way through the lab. Um, the outcomes here are going to learn about the main parts of the ladder diagram. Um, we're going to talk about how to label the ladder diagram and draw it correctly. We're going to introduce the power and the control circuit. And um, we're going to talk about uh, introduce overloads and thermal protection uh, for uh, control the control circuit and how it affects the power circuit. And we're going to talk what's going to talk about memory and relays. And then we're going to talk about uh, drawing a transformer into the control circuit. So the homework three review. Um, Basically, homework uh, covered electrical diagrams and symbols, so you're going to start getting more familiar with those, and you need to memorize those. Um, the course does use ladder or line diagrams, um, and so we are going to work on drawing those ladder and line diagrams and making connections from them, and we'll also utilize JIC symbols. There's a variety of different symbols out there um, that we're going to memorize. There's also IEC symbols uh, that we'll introduce a little bit, just so when you see an IEC symbol, you get a general idea of what it, what, what it is. We talked about switches with a normal condition can be manually or automatically actuated. Um, manually, uh, maybe a push button, automatically would be something like um, a control relay or something. And we did uh, talk about relays being electromechanical switches that can have a variety of contact configurations, and we'll do more of that in this lecture. So the lab introduced uh, the control device symbols. And once again, you're working on memorizing them. You had to connect several circuits using uh, the control diagrams. And whether you were using uh, a component or a schematic or a line diagram, you, know, you want to be able to uh, interchange between the different types of diagrams and find the components and be able to connect them. Um, so you had to create and wire a memory circuit using uh, wire diagram diagrams, kind of what's shown here. So um, you, there's a little activity on your in-class worksheet, so you can uh, stop and go ahead and follow the link that is shown here on the connection video. Um, momentary versus maintained. So we are talking about our memory circuit right here, okay? Um, and we'd have, we're shown here where we have um, normally closed stop button, that's what's depicted there, and a normally open start button here. So these change state when we actuate them. So because this is normally closed, if I actuate the stop, it opens. And this is normally open, so if I actuate the start, it closes. Um, and so you want to understand that terminology of, about how it's operated or activated versus the non-operated or the non-activated, okay? And this stop right here has got a normally closed contact. So when it's activated, the normally closed contacts don't become normally open contacts. They just become actuated so that they're no longer closed, they become open. Now, we're gonna keep learning this as well. And this, the stop button is wired closed. We just wanted to touch base on that real quick. Why is it wired closed? Well, this was our holding circuit that we learned. So because this is closed, we have uh, continuity through the circuit. So if we had line one here, we could have current flow through the stop button because it's normally closed. When we hit the start button, it's normally open, so there wouldn't be any current flow. And this control relay contact is open, so there wouldn't be any current flow there either. Well, if we hit the start button, that would close. 
So we would then have current flow through across the start button or through it to the control relay, causing the control relay, the, the magnetic field and the control relay to come on, pulling the plunger down, which would close this set of contacts here. Okay, so then when I let go of the start button, we've created a parallel path here, um, and the control relay kind of turns itself on and it stays on. And then we want to kill this, we have to hit the stop button. We would open this, control relay goes off, contacts open. So we went to, again, we have the, the open condition here and the open condition here, and, and then it would stay off. So why is stop wired closed? Well, let's say we hit start, and we had our memory here. We let go of the start, we have our memory, control relay is on. So the stop button is, is um, going to stop this. So if for some reason, let's say we had a fork truck coming along and the fork truck ran into the system and, and ran over the stop button, okay? So that stop button would, would be gone or it would be destroyed and, be, and that would cause it to open. And so because it's wired, wired closed, if something happens, um, it looks for the condition where the circuit is opening and then the control relay uh, would go off. Just think about that's opposite from a start button. The start button's normally open, so let's say the fork truck came along and ran over the start button, and the start button was no longer there. Well, that would be the same condition whether it was not actuated and it was there versus if it wasn't there at all because it's an open condition. So the stop is looking for this, uh, the condition that opens the circuit, and the start is looking for the condition that closes it. So stop is wired normally closed for that safe for that safety. Um, we talked about the di device designation, um, for example, one LS, and the one LS was a little more complicated. We had the normally opens, normally closed, versus the normally open held closed, or the normally closed held open. But you're going to need to memorize these. And here's the limit switches here. And uh, we went over those in the, in the video, and you can watch a prior section's video. Um, here, you have some conditions where uh, you have a dotted line between these, or a dashed line between these. So these dashed lines mean that these contacts work together. So in this case, um, this contact is normally open, but it looks like it's being held closed. And because it's dashed here, it means that this contact is being held open. So if I were to let go of these contacts and let go of the, the hold, well, then this one here would close because it's on top would be normally closed. And this one here would open. It would be normally open. So these are a set of contacts that are working together and they're being held. Here's another, here's another one that's similar. These, this is one that's not held because this is the normally closed and this is the normally open. But when I hit the limit switch, two sets of contacts, context change condition. This one closes and this one opens. That's what that uh, dash line means. If for some reason you have um, this limit switch on, let's say, a rung here, and then um, many pages later we use uh, this limit switch here, um, th there, there might be an arrow right here on this limit switch, and it might say like a, a one, let's say this was uh, rung one up here, and then the top one here might have an arrow on it, and let's say it says 90. So maybe all the way down here, this is rung 90, and it might be on a couple different pages. So with that that uh, dashed line with an arrow means and a number, it means that you have to look further into the ladder logic to say that, hey, when this thing shuts here on one, that's going to affect something. But on, on line 90 or a couple pages later on, this one opens. Okay, and so that's how it tie, the the arrow with a number ties the two together when it's not obvious that they're actuated or working together like it, that's shown in these two here. Um, toggle selector versus toggle. So we have maintain switches, um, and those are different than, than the momentary push buttons. And so what we were using a lot of like selector switches and push buttons. But here's a selector switch. This is a a two position, and it's a double break because it breaks at this point here and it breaks at this point here. So that's a double break versus a single break switches. That's what we were showing here. It only breaks at this point. And this one breaks at this point to this point. And then we were talking about having a single pole because there's only uh, one pole here on the left. But this one is a double throw because it switches between two different circuits. This one switches between only one circuit. So these were our toggle uh, switches or our three-way switches um, that we have in class. Um, we have 
toggle three-way switches in class, which is this here. And so you just need to identify that, hey, one of these is the pole or the common, and it's switching between two different circuits, okay? On the quiz review, the quiz was over uh, transformers and power systems. <coughs> circuit labeling. So when we have a circuit and we label it, we have to label the devices, we have to label the rungs, the wires need to get uh, numbered, and the contacts uh, are cross-referenced. So here's an example, and I, and I add on to it a little bit, but you're going to want to stop the PowerPoint here and watch this circuit label video. Okay, relays. <clears throat> we introduced relays before, but we just want to remember that relays are electromechanical relays. Um, is what we're using in this course. We're not using solid-state relays. We're using electromechanical, which means there's moving parts. You'll hear them click. You'll see them move. Um, and they come in a variety of sizes. And the size is not only the actual physical size of the relay, but it, it corresponds to the, the switching capability of it. If it can switch a lot of amps or if it's uh, the voltage of the coil. So there's electrical characteristics of a relay. So a control relay is something that's kind of shown here. It's, it's small on the left here. Um, its ampacity might be 10 amps, 5 amps. It's typically under 10 amps. You can have them a little bit bigger. But a lot of times it's used uh, just for logic, for like holding and stuff like that that we learned. Um, and it has various different types of contacts. But if you see one of these, you'll have to recognize it's a control relay and how to hook it up. Here's a contactor. This is, this is bigger. It's going to likely be bigger in size than a, than a control relay. And what is likely, what is primarily going to be bigger is the ampacity of it. So it's going to have uh, probably four contacts. A lot of times it'll have four normally open contacts, although they, it can have different variations. Usually contact one, two, and three are for line one, two, and three. You see there, line one, line two, line three of the power circuit. Um, and it would have another contact for your holding, okay? And so what these are is these are good for switching large loads. So they might be good for 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 amps, 200 amps, and the big ones, okay? So they switch really big circuits. And then you have motor starters. This is like the Cadillac here. So what this is, and it's different different variations I've shown here um, of IEC versus NEMA. Um, this is going to be a contactor but it's going to have thermal protection, which is added onto here. So it's going to have an overload. So it's basically doing what this is doing. Um, and this is doing what this is doing. It's just they're getting more complex and 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 uh, have a few other options. And that's what this motor starter is going to be here. It's just going to be a big relay that's switching on a motor, probably with a lot of amps, and it's going to have thermal protection on it. So your relay applications um, <laughs> are used for isolation, holding, switching large loads. That's, that's a, a big one here. Uh, you can switch on a very large uh, load with a relay uh, using for interlocks and for a control circuit. We use them on a control circuit. So uh, this is a pretty extensive video right here. Go ahead and stop and, and watch this relay video um, about the operation of relays. Um, the push to test line. Remember, you need to identify the common wire in order to properly hook this up. Uh, there was a push and test light video, and that is the same video that is right here. So if you want to take a moment to run through the push to test and refresh yourself, it's right there. So a memory circuit. Let's create a memory circuit that's accomplished. And so you're going to have a transformer. You're going to have to uh, remember how to hook up a transformer from um, two to one. Okay. And so um, actually, we'll go ahead and we'll make this 240 to 120. Okay. We'll draw the circuit for that. But... Um, if you have one of the training boards, you're just looking for a two to one change in the transformer. Okay? And that is going to be a standard uh, start, stop, holding circuit. Uh, and you're going to switch the conditions to some red and green light. So go ahead and stop this and this, uh, watch this video of how to draw it and how to connect it. Okay, we're going to do another circuit here, a selector switch jog. And once again, we're going to do the same. We're going to call this 240 volts to 120 volts. So you're going to have to get good at uh, hooking up an industrial control transformer so you can get two to one um, and you have to also know how to do the four to one and so this is going to have the start stop holding and we're going to add a selector switch so we're going to have a variety of different symbols here so once again you're going to have to go ahead and stop and watch this video here of how to do the selector switch jog and hook it up three pole circuit breaker um, <clears throat> so we're going to start adding circuit breakers into our circuits because we're going to start using three phase power 
And basically, um, we're talking about a way to break the current flow in a power circuit. There's magnetic, thermal, and thermomagnetic. We're going to learn a lot more about circuit breakers later on, about how these different ones work. But right now, we just wanted to introduce you to the symbols. <clears throat> Notice that these symbols are drawn vertical. We'll be drawing horizontal power circuits. So these will be flipped 90 degrees, so they're horizontal. So a disconnect, we'll have the, abbrevi the abbreviation DISC. DISC for disconnect and basically this is a disconnect you pull the handle and it breaks the lines one two and three here is a um, the indication that you have a circuit breaker okay and when the circuit breaker goes it's going to go one two three it's going to break all three lines and a circuit breaker is going to have the des designation of CB all right so here's all these right here are going to be your CBs all right and then you have the actuation of these. Are they going to be thermal, which would be right here. Thermal, that's what those symbols mean, that you got a thermal. Here's a magnetic. Um, and that's, we'll be once again talking about all these. But if you're drawing it, you're going to start wanting to memorize this. And then you can have a thermal magnetic uh, right here. So <clears throat> those are the symbols for a uh, three-pole circuit breaker that you're going to want to um, memorize and know how to label and draw. So here's a motor circuit that uh, you're going to go ahead and you're going to label the wire numbers. You're going to wire uh, the items. For example, I just talked about it right here. This right here is a disconnect, right? And you, you're going to know by looking at it because it's got the symbol here. It's a thermal disconnect, okay? And so wire your transformers, wire your overloads, uh, wire numbers, and everything here. Um, take a look at this motor circuit, and you want to show that to the uh, lab instructor. Uh, of note, you also want to label your motor here. So the motor is 10 horsepower, 480 volt, 760 RPM. So those numbers go over here by the motor to indicate uh, that that's what we've got. Um, we've got a little review here. Go ahead and uh, this is in your video lecture. You want to work through this review here and uh, get uh, the conditions as indicated. Okay. So at this point, um, you're finished. You can t uh, turn to your lecture video worksheet. You should have worked through all these uh, examples of how to hook these items up. And should you have a, a better understanding of ladder logic diagrams uh, and their symbols and how to label them correctly. Um, and then the, when you're done, you can uh, move on to the lab.